Hello, this is Matt Hatter, and today I am here to do some woodworking. I know I haven't done it on this channel, but we're going to be making this. This is a editing board for uh, making videos a little bit easier. It's got a big spinny knob, uh, some little spinny knobs, and a bunch of buttons you can push. And it's made out of uh, walnut and ash. So. We're gonna get into how I built this and what it does and see where it goes from there. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve and the, this is where I do all of my editing. It's a free program by Blackmagic Design and I know they make a similar piece of hardware while well, theirs is far better than mine, but I'm gonna show you how I actually use it. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about this big wheel. What that does is if I click into Resolve actually, it allows me to frame forward, frame by frame, or play, or play at double speed. And it allows me to go backwards frame by frame, backwards play, or backwards double speed. The next one that I have programmed right now, and realize that I haven't programmed all these, so there's gonna be new things I learn as I go. But this knob up here, if I turn it, it goes forward to play, double speed, four times speed, 8, 16, and just doubles as we go. And if I push it in, it stops. If I turn it the other direction, it goes backwards. And if I, um, you know, it'll, it'll fast forward. Now let's get to some of the other buttons. And I'm not sure about this button layout, but I'm just going to drop a clip at the end. So we'll play with this clip. So if I turn this, oh, let's mute the clip. So if I turn this, I can get to a spot where I want to start. And I can set my end by pushing the number one key. And if I want to, I can go to the end, or to the place that I want to splice, I guess, and I can push the three key. And I can go to the next spot where I want an in, push the one key. So, and I can go to the spot where I want to end the clip, and I can press the two key, and it clips it off like that. So that really is a lot of my editing workflow done. So you can just, you know, play through and, oh, I want to be about there. Go through to the exact frame. Say this is where I frame in. Go ahead, say that's where I frame out, and then go, go on to the next clip. I'm going to be adding more things as I go, but that's kind of where we're at right now. So let's get into the build. So I'm using what's called a Shaper Origin. That's what has all those dominoes on the uh, the table. What it is is a CNC router that has a optics-based uh, control. So it learns where it's at based upon where it is relative to those dominoes. It's a fancy tool. I understand that not everybody will have one. I understand it's not cheap. So if you don't have that, I'm sorry, you're probably not gonna be able to make this project the same way I did. So the first thing I gotta do is I gotta scan the uh, work surface and that's done by just kind of moving it everywhere. And I'm not gonna show you the full scanning process of just kind of me moving around and taking a look at all of the parts of the board and making sure I take a picture of the work piece as well. So then after that, we can actually go through and uh, play, uh, make a grid, which is gonna make it so that we can align things to the square appropriately. What I mean by align to the square is I mean, if we have a part on the front and a part on the back, we need to not only align it in the X and in the Y, but we also need to align it in twist, right? Because if it's not twisted correctly, it'll uh, cut on the wrong spot. <clears throat> so that's what we're doing here is making the grid, which uh, you do by taking three points with the spindle. Now we're going to place our cut. So I figured I'd show you how I do that. Um, you select your CAD file from the screen, and then it shows you on there where you where do you want to place it. So I found a spot on the um, on the board where I wanted to cut this and I just put the file that I want down and that's going to get repeated for each of like the knob pieces and the uh, board itself, you know, all of the individual things I've got to cut and we'll get into what that looks like in a little bit. 
So I know this is a terrible camera angle, but this is just me cutting out uh, chunks of the board. This is my first cuts on this project. You notice I have some screws in to anchor it down. That's really important because if it moves, you ruin the piece. So this is me cutting out a couple of inserts where the keys are going to go. That's what it looks like. And then you, you have to go through and actually do clean up with hand tools. Just because you use or have a CNC doesn't mean it does everything for you. So to try to give you an idea on how this works, I took this shot, which shows you the spindle head moving around. And what I see on the screen is this. Um, I push the button and in this case, I'm hogging out the little squares where each of the keys are going to go. And I do that by following on the screen what it does, and it corrects for any mistakes I made. You saw the corrections happening in that previous shot. Anyway, I do this for each of the individual key pieces, and then I'm going to switch over and do a different style of cutting. It's just a plunge cut and kind of scribble around uh, for this little hole. Everywhere that's blue is a place I've already cut, so that way it keeps track of what I've already done. Now, to add a chamfer to kind of clean up the edge, I'm going to use this engraving bit. It's not the right bit for what we're doing, but I'll just tell it to trace exactly on the line, and I'll plunge just a little bit into the workpiece, and that'll give me a nice little 45 degree chamfer on all the edges. So the first thing you got to do when you're changing bits with the shaper is take off the, the motor, in, uh, put the spindle in, and then there's a function that zeroes the height, so it goes, it plunges down into a piece of wood, and then as soon as it detects that it hit the wood, it, uh, you know, stops and it says, oh, that's where the wood's at. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to forgo any vacuuming or whatever in this video, in the video, because as you can hear, it's quite loud. Now, this is me tightening it in. You've got to tighten up the, the motor, otherwise it will slide and the, the zeroing will fail. But here's an example of what it does when you zero. You hold the, the thing still, push the button, it drives down, and it bumps the ground, and it retracts. There it retracted, and you could see it kind of tilted the machine a little bit when it bumped the ground. It's me cutting the chamfers. Again, I'm just going to skip through a lot of the cutting if I can. Um, but... It draws an ant line on the screen. I didn't get a good picture of that, but it draws an ant line, and if you screw up and you go off the ant line, it aborts just like what you just saw. I personally like this tool because it makes me feel like I'm still part of the woodworking, whereas like a big CNC machine, it just kind of takes it all away. Um, you kind of just feel like you hit a button and you're playing a computer program. And as I'm going through, I check for chamfer and I, you know, adjust and uh, make it deeper if and just slowly creep up on the chamfer I want. So this is what it looks like after it's chamfered. Still rough. You still got all those bird edges. So we'll get to cleaning that up next. So to do that, I'm going to use a hand chisel. Uh, I sharpen it with this power sharpener thing. I don't even know where I found it, but it does make sharpening chisels way faster. You just wiggle it and then it, um, you know, sharp. So just a quick chop through sand. And this, you know, is actually like an hour of video cut down to just just a little bit of chopping. And even though I'm using a CNC, you can't get square corners unless you use a chisel. So I use a chisel. It works nice. Now here I'm just eyeballing where the holes will go. And this worked out fine, actually. Like, I didn't know if this was going to work. But I really didn't want to plot every single hole and then have to manually cut it. So I tried it on my first key. It worked great for the first key. So I just kept on going. Anyway. It took a little bit of practice to get it lined up, but afterwards, this actually didn't take as long as you'd, you'd think. Uh, I don't remember how long it took, but it was pretty quick to get through all the holes. The center holes, I need to have pretty close to a line. Oh, and you may have saw I drilled a hole in the upper right-hand corner. That's so I know where the, um, the back side of this is for lining things up later. Oh, 
Okay, now, since we have that pilot hole that I drilled, I made a mark in my CAD where that hole should be. And if I go and actually line that up, it uh, does indeed like line up on the opposite side and I can actually use that to get everything all sorted out. That's what I did for this project. It doesn't mean it's the only way to do it, but it worked for me. Here's a video of me trying to figure out what depth I needed. I started out shallow, and this is generally how I get to the correct depth. I cut a little hole, so just a little one like this, and I see how deep it looks. I measure with a drill bit, you know, I unscrew the screws and I screw it back in, but I measure with a drill bit to see the depth. And it's not anywhere close to deep enough, but I keep doing that same process over and over again. And this is how I secure the um, the workpiece, is I just put it down, butt it up against that corner area, and put some screws in. It worked pretty well for me to do it this way. It was pretty repeatable, and I, I don't really... I think I'd do this again exactly the same way. So now it's adjust the depth and go deeper and then slowly creep up on the depth that I really want. And I did this a lot and every time I just expand my hole a little bit. So remember I talked about earlier the marching ant line? You can kind of see what I'm talking about here. I switched the cut to an outside cut and then I can go around the outside like this. And if I miss, it doesn't it just fixes it for me. You can see the little dot in the center of the screen. It's not exactly in the center of the crosshairs because I was making mistakes, but the router compensates for that. And this is just me milling out the uh, entire thing. And look at that. We have a um, proper uh, cutout board. Well, not cutout board. We have a copper in proper engraved board. Now, I cut around the outside, I didn't do that on camera, but now I'm just cutting with the bandsaw to get most of the waste off. I still have that really ugly edge, and I just sanded it to fit. Uh, I thought about using a router, like a router table, but it was a lot of work to set that up, and the sander was already ready, so it seemed like the easy solution. I also cut out the knob, but uh, the same way as it on the CNC, but I didn't do the chamfer on it, and I also didn't um, film it. So I'm just sanding a chamfer on it, and then sanding it through. The other thing I didn't do was mill on the backside, so I just found a drill bit that fit kind of close, and I uh, put it in like put it in where I wanted it to go, and then marked the center of the hole and drilled out the uh, spot for the knob. And it doesn't have the D-flat that you would really want on this, but I found if you just got the drill a little bit undersized, it was plenty difficult to get in and out. I even had to go through and drill out the bottom with a Dremel. And here's me using the drill bit technique again. Uh, it's a really tight press fit to get it in there, um, but over time it kind of loosened and now I can get the knob on and off reasonably. And this is where the long part of this project started. I had to solder a lot of wires. Um, probably not the best way to do this sort of a project. Building a circuit board is definitely far more efficient. I just wanted to do it this weekend, so I did it. Soldered it all in and then I you know, put in the knobs, hot glued everything down, and... Okay, well here's the point where we talk about what's in the video, what's not in the video, what things went right, what things went wrong. So, these buttons up here, they're not wired up. And that's because I spent the better part of eight hours or so soldering, and I'm done with soldering, uh, not doing the wires any longer. Uh, these... The knobs, I love this. These buttons, they work great, they feel great. The case, I love the look of the case. Um, 
but I forgot to record parts of building it, so that didn't go right. And I think I'm going to do another one. So uh, if you made it this far in the video, I'm going to uh, give you a hint that the circuit board that I'm going to build is likely smaller than this in this direction, but longer in this direction. That's because I found a PCB vendor or circuit board vendor that uh, is very cheap for small square boards, but gets really expensive if you just extend it one millimeter in the outward direction. So that might be a future video. I have started the layout, I've started the design on that, and I, it's looking pretty good, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, this is Hatter, and I'm out. Bye.